Welcome everybody. Um, Pastor John Walworth is here tonight from the Congregational Church here in Perry, and he has um, agreed to bring an invocation before our meeting starts. Well, Lord, let us pray. Dear Father, as we gather here in these council chambers, uh, we ask for your presence, Lord. Uh, in these days and times of uncertainty, uh, chaos around the world. Uh, we pray, Lord, for uh, your peace to come upon this uh, uh, this meeting, Lord. And uh, I pray, Lord, that they would not necessarily do good tonight, but they would do what is right. Uh, I pray that you would bless them and encourage them, Lord, in their work. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you very much. Jed? Hello. I wondered if you were on that fire truck that uh, was there. Today? Yeah. yeah. It was about supper time. Mm -hmm. Was that you? Yep. You like laying on that horn right when you get by the house? <laughs> <laughs> <I don't... laughs> I know, I know that too. <laughs> yeah. The cue's even better. The cue? The really, really loud sound. Oh, yeah. yeah. We call that the traffic mover siren. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Good evening. <clears throat> oh. I think we're all here, so we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order it's just about seven. And I'll ask if you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Shirley, would you take roll call, please? Mike Connell. Chad Fuller. Here. Larry Lambert. Here. Bob Porter. Here. Kimi Dunn. Here. Hopper. <coughs> Here. Sue Hammond. Here. And Mike Connell um, did let me know he wouldn't be here tonight or next week, but that's the last football game, so then he'll be back. Looking for approval of the agenda for tonight? I move that the agenda be adopted as printed. Second. We have a motion from Chad, seconded by Larry. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. And then our meeting minutes from last <coughs> September 21st, looking for uh, the reading and approval of those minutes. I move that we suspend the rules, waive the rating, and approve the minutes from the September 21st, 2023 regular meeting. Second. We have a motion from Larry, seconded by Bob. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Okay, we've come to a favorite time of the meeting, and that is for the awards for the Perry Pride Award and put your best face forward award. Mike Connell, who is not here this evening because he's coaching football, did choose the winners of these awards ahead of time. And I'd like to ask Jane Easton of 129 East 2nd Street the beautiful White House across the street from the Congregational Church. Yeah. You have been awarded the Perry Pride Resident Award. 
in recognition of your efforts in maintaining your home and yard, thus generating Perry pride. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for doing all you do. Thank you. We'll let Megan get you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thanks for coming. And now we have the Put Your Best Face Forward Merchant Recognition. And Mike chose Codette's True Value Hardware, the new guys in town. So come forward to receive your award. And it's Jeff. Jeff and Robin. And Robin. Yep. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. And here is your award in recognition of your efforts in bringing pride to the community. Thank you. And thank you for all you did the day, the weekend of the tornado. You did a lot of stuff. Free hot dogs, free chainsaw sharpening, and lots of good stuff. That was great. We're part of the community. <laughs> yes, you are, and thank you for that. Mike also has some honorable mentions for the residential awards, and there were two houses, 400 Williams and 116 Orchard Street. So congratulations to everybody. It's now time for public comment. If we have anyone <coughs> here who wants to step forward um, and make any public comment. Doesn't look like we have anybody for that. Communications, how about that, Shirley? Do so, we have any? Mm -hmm. um, I handed out a revised trade policy. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah. Um, I also handed out the an, an email from MML, the insurance company, on what um, our next check will look like when they when they send that to us. So just items that are covered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Did you want to go through them at all? Do you want to read them, or do you want to just let the council look um, them over and maybe bring questions next next time if they yeah, have any? I think okay. So. Yeah. All right. Because they just got those tonight. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just have a few things. Um, we are still receiving donations and hope to continue to receive them uh, toward our natural disaster recovery. We have so far have received $12,200. And just a reminder that we do have an anonymous donor who is offering to match 50% of what's collected in donations from September 22nd to December 1st, up to a total of $5,000. So, is, is there any location for those donations? Right here at City Hall. City Hall. Yeah. Okay. And you can make it a payable to City, City of Perry, but put the natural disaster That's fund right. on okay. there remarks line. Thank you. This is the proof for the sign, if you guys want to pass that around. That just came today and uh, Megan and Shirley and I talked with them and had to make a little, few little tweaks to it, but it'll be six foot tall and three feet wide. Um, and Larry talked with Scott down at Carl's grocery store, and he said we could put it there out by the sidewalk where there used to be a payphone there. Mm -hmm. There's still a yep. something or other, a stand of some kind. So the DPW guys will affix it to that. We have a street light right there. It will help illuminate it, I think, as well. And Scott's only concern was to not have it block any of their you know, main sign that they've got their specials and things on. So getting close to a street light going into you know, dark times of up in people's spot. Yeah. And then there'll be stickers that go up as the yep. as the, the vinyl red stickers will nice. go up and these little lines are five thousand dollar increments. Okay. 
Um, the 300,000 designates what insurance is projected to pay. 500,000 is what we're anticipating as a grand total of needing to cover in expenses for tornado recovery. Um, so as we go by 5,000s, we'll put that in with red. And the material, the signs being put on, is, I forget the word it was, something like aluminum, but it wasn't aluminum, and I don't remember. Aluminite. Aluminite, was that it? Light. Say it once more. Aluminite. Aluminite. Okay, so he said we could write on that with a black um, permanent marker if we wanted to indicate anything. Um, if we wanted to write on the side here, projected insurance amount, you know, so just to try to make things more clear. We could we could add that kind of thing. So that's what it'll be like. It should be here next week. We have, and Shirley mentioned, handing out the revised parade policy. <clears throat> the parade was wonderful for homecoming. So many people were in town. Um, they were still going into the football game, trying to get through into the, toward the end of the first quarter. They were still trying to get in. There were so many people. So it was wonderful. But we still had a lot of children and some adults running out into the street to grab candy, mm -hmm. which is so dangerous. And we had put on our parade policy that form that's given out to anybody who's applying for a parade permit. For safety of onlookers and participants, candy or other items are not to be thrown into the street. It may be handed out directly to onlookers or tossed to the grassy area past the curb. We've revised it um, after conversation with um, Chief Fox and taken out or tossed to the grassy area past the curb. So the application now just ends in regard to what I just read. It may be handed out directly to onlookers. If that fails to keep people from being out in the street during the parade, we'll just have to eliminate candy being in the parade at all. Um, it's just too dangerous, especially those little kids. They get out there, the fire department guys driving those trucks. They can't see down and see those kids. It's a, it's a big blind spot in front yeah. of us. Yeah. Even even with two people in the trucks, it's still still a big blind spot. Yeah. Even the school bus that was in there. Yes, right. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted y'all to be aware of that, and everybody who is thinking of being in a parade. That's everything that I have. So looking now for department head reports. Um, Megan, do you have something? Good evening. Um, I just have a little bit of treasury update for you. Um, summer taxes were due September 30th. That was a weekend. Um, so the due date was extended through Monday, October 2nd to 4 p.m. Um, penalties were not assessed for anything received in our office on Monday. Um, any balances outstanding after that date were applied a 1% penalty. That penalty remains the same until the balance is paid in our office up until February 28th. Anything after February 28th is transferred to the county. Uh, other penalties may apply at that time. So as of today, summer taxes were 94% collected, um, which was a pretty significant um, collection rate, I think. Um, new this year was the parks millage. Our total millage on our tax roll was $5,857, which is new revenue to our parks. And to date, we've collected 5,534 of that. And of our city revenue taxes, we've collected just about 700,000. Um, it's still kind of in process rolling into our, our budget for the general fund because as the money is collected, it goes to a tax fund and then it's dispersed out to us. Um, so in October, we'll recognize on our budget that we have received at least $700,000. Um, that, 
is pretty much all I have as far as Treasury news. I hope to have first quarter budget review for the next meeting. Um, I just didn't have month end wrapped up yet. It's awfully early this month. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have some other updates for other things I handle here at the city. First of all, Devon's tree is planted and as of today, very well watered. <laughs> so it looks nice out there. Um, the bench is here. The plaque has arrived for the back of the bench. Um, but the concrete's going to be coordinated with sidewalk work. So that's still pending installation. Um, I believe last meeting it was discussed that the city will have trick-or-treating hours on Halloween the 31st from 6 to 8. Um, some downtown businesses often coordinate um, an early Halloween event. It's called Treats on Main Street. I was recently informed that this year is going to be Sunday, October 29th from 3 to 5 p.m. I don't have a flyer yet. Once it's shared with me, we'll make sure we share it on social media. Again, it's not hosted by the city, but we definitely promote anything community-oriented. Um, I believe Amy's Diner is the lead on that if any other local businesses want to get involved. And then the next step then would be Christmas Fantasy. Um, does the council usually agree to that date? Or it's, it's always the second Saturday. It's always, it's yeah, always no. the second Saturday in December. So this year it'll be December 9th. I plan on it following the same schedule as in the past, which is about 5 to 8 p.m. Um, I have started some of the coordination work with um, lining up our very special guests, Mr. and Mrs. Claus. Um, the dentist has agreed to do the horse-drawn wagon rides again in town. Um, so I would say in the next, probably right after Halloween, we'll start um, reaching out to individual uptown businesses to make sure they still plan on participating. The orthodontist office is going to coordinate the scavenger hunt again. Um, and usually we just check in with everybody. Are you going to be open? What kind of activity do you think you'll have? And um, oftentimes we're donated a raffle prize that is then part of a silent raffle, free raffle um, at the fire hall the night of the event. Any questions on any of those things? And I will definitely look for help, hopefully. Um, for doing the reach out to the merchants when it comes to checking in with them to make sure they want to participate. Uh, last year, Mindy Gabaldi was a uh, tremendous help in going business to business, following up and making sure people knew when what was happening and how they were participating. So, um, you mean so help for both the Christmas fantasy and the Halloween event? Um, if you want to help for Halloween, I would reach out to Amy at the okay. diner. Um, but for sure, Christmas, yes. Thank you. That's all I have. Any questions for Megan, Council? I think we're set. Thank you. Thank you. Shirley, do you have anything as a department? Um, I just have that Spartan fence. They fixed the fence, right, Kevin? I'm sorry. They fixed the fence at the. At yes, the okay. Fence. So they fixed the fence. Um, <clears throat> their original bid, I think, was sixteen fifty. And they gave us a five hundred dollar discount, so we paid one thousand one hundred fifty dollars for that repair. So Spartan fixed Fence donation. fixed the fence, and they took five hundred off yes. the price as a donation yes. for the tornado disaster fund. Very yes. good. Awesome. Thank you for that, Kevin. You're up. Good evening, everybody. Lots of tornado news. Um, most of the demolition is complete. Um, there's still some footings in place. Uh, we did find an old footing, a large chunk of concrete at the DPW site that uh, they worked pretty much a whole day on it and got nowhere. Um, so uh, Smith Sand and Gravel is doing the work. Had a conversation with them. They said that they could remove it for a slight upcharge. So I contacted the insurance company, and everybody agreed that it's in the city's best interest to get that removed. So that will be taken care of. One of those uh, unforeseen expenses that you, you don't want to find, but uh, it's it's quite large. Um, the new garage door is installed and working at the DPW garage. The back door. Um, the cost of that was around twelve thousand dollars. Uh, that was funded by the insurance. Uh, the fence repair, as uh, Shirley mentioned, was completed by Spartan Fence. Um, we had salvaged enough uh, leftover materials that were stored in the storage barn 
to put uh, a temporary metal roof on the salt barn. We finished that this week, so we got the tarps off. It's multicolored and it looks funny, but it's it's <laughs> functional. So um, if you'd like to admire that, you can see it really well from the park. <laughs> um, so. We had to move the gas pumps to do the demolition down at the DPW. Um, there were some fees involved with that, and the insurance company agreed to uh, help us out with that. Uh, we had to have the tanks pumped down, and then we moved them uh, with the equipment, made a new pad for them, moved them over, and then we had to get electrical out to them. Um, we have scheduled the repair of the gutters for the City Hall building. They should be starting that within a few weeks. Um, the dangerous tree removal on 2nd and 3rd Street, um, there was one on Green Street, is complete. Um, we have stumps. Um, we'll probably have to, to budget for stump grinding or stump removal of, from leftover from the standing trees that didn't get uprooted. They're just going to, they're safe now, so they're just going to have to be there. Uh, until we figure out a plan for those, or we just leave them forever and let them rot. Um, we should probably have them removed so that the landscape looks somewhat normal in the future, but we can talk about that down the road, maybe next budget year. Um, the, um, where all the stumps had ripped out of the ground, uh, we have removed all those. We put in temporary repairs where the sidewalks used to be and filled in the holes with dirt and topsoil. So they're passable. They just don't look the best. I kind of wanted to get council's feelings on if they think that we should start replacing some of the, the damaged sidewalks. Um, I don't have a bid or a quote. Um, Ryan Cordier, who's done lots of work with us, has agreed to work with us. Uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, he's got all the tools and equipment to do sidewalk repairs and he typically is very reasonable on his rate. And I could have him bid the whole project if, if that's what you'd like to see. Um, I think getting it started and we can do like a truckload at a time and we have money in the streets fund. Um, slated for sidewalk repair and uh, I figured it would be best if we started, you know, when we're available, work through it. Um, and we have within that fund, uh, that certain amount that's slated for sidewalks, we wouldn't exceed that. It's not necessarily a budgeted item, but uh, I just wanted to kind of feel everybody out and if they want me to start on that, we could start as soon as next week and probably get some done this year before winter snowfall starts and people can clear their sidewalks and do things like that. Um, are all those sidewalks, Kevin, on 2nd and 3rd Street or, or are some of them on um, Green Street? Uh, I believe most of the, all the sidewalk on Green Street is intact. I haven't noted okay. any damage there. There's okay. one spot here at City Hall. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, there's a couple spots on 3rd Street and then most of it's on 2nd. What does the bidding process look like? I'm obviously new, but is there like a closed envelope bid, public open envelope style? I mean, that's how it is in the HVAC industry. I was Basically, I would just secure quotes or a quote, and okay. then we would move forward from there. Um, so there's the council approval if, if we wanted to do some sort of, uh, I just get three prices. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The work for the, um, tornado related expenses that we've incurred so far has been very different from the bid process we would typically be seeing because so much of it was urgent and had to be done immediately. Um, Kevin, of course, always does a great job at trying to get us the best price, but uh, typically for other types of things, like we had the uh, bids for whatever <coughs> that engineering thing was called that we just the did. The RFP for yeah. engineering, we did um, a sealed bid for that. Yeah. We okay. two responses for that. And we approved uh, Wolverine to work on, on high dollar stuff typically or like bigger projects. Right. 
We also have a purchasing policy that sets a limit for if it exceeds this amount, that's when you go out for bid. Okay. And I couldn't tell you that amount, off <laughs> but I just know it exists. I was just curious. Yeah. Right. Just trying to answer your question without the actual book in front of me to yeah. say this is what we do. I'll put a line up extra test on it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I talked to Michigan Recycling and I'm working on a uh, potentially lower cost to have the storm debris ground up and hauled out. Um, we would eliminate some of the stuff they were offering and just do a basic cleanup back there and make it look similar to what it was before the storm. Um, he was supposed to get back from me before tonight and I haven't heard from him so I know he's busy. Everybody's busy with all the, the tree work and storm damage and everything lately. Um, when I get something more on that, I, I plan on bringing that to you as well. Um, in other news, uh, the tree at the McQueen House, the dead tree that we brought up during a council meeting, uh, we had that removed and taken down to make it safe so there's not branches falling down on the road and sidewalk anymore. Um, and then sewer water and street operations are ongoing as normal. Okay. Is there any questions or comments? Council, do you council? have a discussion you'd like to have in regard to Kevin's question about moving ahead with sidewalk repairs now? I think we should try to do as much as we can. Put a well, date like November 15th, November 20th, it's kind of ending. That's about a good time to, where you start getting weather, it's going to start really bother you. Yeah, I I would do it a truckload at a time and and see how far we could get with that and kind of plan out what we're doing. And uh, I would try to keep the costs under my spending limit. I would just manage that and do it, you know, ongoing. Um, and I'm, not, I'm like I said, I'm not going to overspend in that budget because I, I work pretty closely with Megan on what I can and can't right. do. Um, since I'm new to this position, um, well, I'm not as new, I just had my one year anniversary, so I've been torturing you guys for a year already. <laughs> that flew by. Um, Happy anniversary. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while, though. Um, <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. I agree with Bob that as much as we can get done before the weather turns bad, I think it's just a good faith effort on the city's part to get yeah. our street sidewalks at least back to the state they were prior to the tornado. And, and what I would like to see is city trucks on those streets doing that work and not a high dollar company coming in and just blowing through it and, and getting in and out and getting their money. We're going to take our time, we're going to make sure the sidewalks are right and back to normal and uh, I think we can stretch our bucks a little bit further that way. So. And we do have money coming in. Uh, you know, in our donations, um, certainly we can cover what we can with our budget, but if we need, you know, another thousand or whatever, I mean, we can pull it out of there because it is a result of the tornado damage. So, Megan will, Megan will make sure that gets done. Right, Megan? The yeah. Redmix company just, might give you a little discount on your loads when you tell them it's I'll work with Ryan what it's on for. That. I've not had luck with the concrete companies trying to order stuff. Um, I can't get them to answer the phone for me. But when Ryan calls them, they answer and ask how much do you want, where do you want them. So uh, I guess we don't contract enough with them or, or use enough of their product. So um, and that people don't know who I am either. So that's kind of the problem. Well, you've but, only been here a year. So. I well, I'm working on it. Yeah. You just need to get meaner with them. Then I'll, then... Maybe. Not concrete ready mix people. <laughs> That's the wrong attitude. Yeah. <laughs> you will be put on the bottom of the list. So, thank you for your time. Thanks, Thanks for having me. <clears throat> Committee reports. I have an update from Sessa. Okay. Since we had a special meeting on Tuesday. For um, those who might not know, Bob Porter is out one of our two representatives to the Sessa board. So, he will give that report. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we had a special meeting on Tuesday, um, and the board determined that the chief's position is serves at the pleasure of the board, and the board decided that we no longer wanted the service of our current chief. Um, if you didn't know, the chief has been on paid leave for about three months. So that 
part of it is over. We are going to start looking for an interim chief, but it won't be tomorrow. Anything else, Bob? No, nope, thank you. Uh, just a couple of quick items. The Ordinance Committee will be holding a, a meeting next Thursday, the 12th of October, 10 a.m. here in the Council Chambers to continue our uh, discussion on a uh, couple of ordinances that we've been, uh, been working on. The uh, uh, animal uh, ordinance that I spoke of is moving forward. Uh, we're getting ready to have that to go to our city attorney probably early next week and optimistically we'll be able to have that on hopefully next agenda as a first reading uh, to take another crack at uh, updating our animal slash pet ordinance uh, activity. Uh, on another note, uh, I also sat on the uh, planning commission and just let everyone know that the uh, master plan update that we've talked about in here before is moving forward. A draft is being developed with a lot of work from the uh, company McKenna that we've contracted with uh, to help guide us in that uh, effort. We're at our last meeting began to see some draft materials. <coughs> uh, we're continuing to try to get as much uh, resident and community input as possible to go into that master plan. Uh, to that end, one of the representatives from McKenna along with some of the Planning Commission members will be at the uh, Farmer's Market on uh, October the 14th at McQueen House to try to uh, take any additional input that any uh, attendees at that activity would like to share as we, uh, as we move forward. There is still the opportunity for uh, input to the uh, survey. If anyone hasn't done that already, I encourage you to go online onto our website. It takes about 10 minutes to, uh, to go through and complete the survey. Uh, we're at 120 some uh, respondents right now. Would like to get up if possible to a number of 200 to get a good cross section of uh, resident and community input. Comments, questions? When was the ordinance meeting again, Murray? Thursday morning next week on the 14th. Oh, excuse me, the 12th. The 12th at uh, 10 a.m. in here. Yeah. <clears throat> just an update for. Are you done? I'm sorry, Larry. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, just an update on the parks. We, I think I brought it up last meeting. We had two bids come in for the pavilion. Um, hopefully, we can get the third one. Tomorrow. Hope oh, tomorrow. Yeah, okay. I won't be here. If if we can if we can get the third bid by tomorrow, we might have a special meeting so that we can look at all three of them and then pick out which one we want to go with and give it to the insurance so we can start getting stuff ordered because as of right now I've talked to both bids that we have already and they have nothing starting they have nothing planned starting the spring of next year so hopefully we can start ordering stuff the supplies and they can get it on their schedules okay. any questions for Chad or for Larry or Bob? Okay. Presentation and approval of the bills. I move that we approve the bills as presented to pay the authorized. Second. <coughs> we have a motion from Bob, seconded by Chad. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Old business is next, and we don't have any of that, so we'll move into new business. Our first new business is basically a discussion. No, no definite uh, decisions to be made tonight, because this is our first time really talking about this as a council. Um, when the department heads and I met to um, prioritize the repairs and cleanup after the tornado. The subject came up about the antique fire truck. Well, it's called a fire truck, but it never really served as a fire truck. So what it truly is, is a 1929 Ford antique truck that was at some time in the last 30 years painted red and made to look like a fire truck. The city of Perry received it as a donation from Stiley Ferris, for those of you who, like me who are old enough and remember who he is. 
evidently nobody else in the room is, so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It, anyway, um, but it has only been used a few times in parades um, in the past. It's not been used for five years or so. Um, and used very seldom before that. So during our department head meeting, we said, well, we're paying insurance on the truck. And it was in one of the buildings that got demolished in the tornado, but it, the truck, did not have damage to it. It was dirty, but it wasn't damaged. And Jeff Tobias from the fire department actually was very worried about it, so he got a flatbed truck, and then he and Scott Grinnell came and took it to Jeff's pole barn so it would have a place to live until we could have a place to store it again. So that was very nice, and we appreciate that. But the question then comes up, do we want to keep this truck, or shall we sell it? So just in anticipation of the questions that might come up in regard to that, I made a few phone calls. I did call and talk with Tim Delu and told him of our thoughts and wondered if the fire department or SESA did want to buy it. He said, I'll get back to you. We don't have any money, he said, but I'll get back to you. I said, I understand. So they're <coughs> still thinking about it, I guess. Um, I made other phone calls too, and I called one of our local people here who was involved in antique car shows and stuff, and asked him if he would research that and see what it might be worth. And his feedback on that was that it would be somewhere between ten and fourteen thousand dollars. In a good sale, it might bring more. Um, it's insured for eleven thousand seven hundred, um, so those numbers fall right together. So um, discussion, more information you might want. I did also before I close my mouth here. I did talk to Justin and said this truck, to the best of my research, was donated to the city. It was not purchased with city money. Can we just sell this or does it have to go to a vote of the people like the land that we own south of town had to? Um, and so he didn't think it did but was going to research it and get back to me. So I haven't heard back from him yet. So, what are your thoughts? Does it run? It, it, um, it did. did. <laughs> it did. I don't know if it still does. If we were to keep it, what are your thoughts of what we're going to use it for? Are we going to put money into it to restore it even further? I don't think it needs restoration. It, it has an older restoration that was done on it, and it looks fairly good in the state that it's in. But the, an older vehicle like that requires constant maintenance to keep it yes. up and running. So there's, with the insurance cost yep. and overhead of the maintenance, and then you got to get them all and run them and drive them once in a while to keep it exactly. working. And it's not an easy vehicle to drive. Nobody can just jump in there and go. You have to know how to drive a vehicle that mm -hmm. tight. Um, it, it's, it's just going to be an ongoing cost for the city. How much are we paying in insurance? Do we know this? Do you know that, Megan? No, because uh, our policy is just one very large yeah. policy. I it's personally just, say try to stop it because if we haven't done anything with it in five years, what are we going to do in the future? Well, you got to think it's been sitting in that barn for five years, and then Mother Nature took the barn away from it. So mm -hmm. I, I would say try to sell it. Mm -hmm. I lived here for seven years, and I didn't even know they had it. So it <laughs> told me that he hauled it to the farm. So yeah. it's not, and I go to the parades quite often. Oh, so never yeah. went. I never saw it. Just, I had no idea we had something like that. So hiding it away doesn't help either. No. If we sell it, and, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I would say if we sell it and we have this money, um, I think the intent of a donation like that is probably to bring pride to the city. 
So is our intent to reuse those funds for we'll something over there. else mm -hmm. to bring joy to the community, or would it be to... That, that would be part of the decision process that okay. we could go through. Because I'm all for selling it based on the cost. I mean, that's... Kevin really, really wants the money, though, to go in the... What do you call that fund? The vehicle fund? The motor pool. Motor, 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 motor pool is what's paid for yeah. the maintenance thus far. Yeah. Okay. And... We have some big purchases coming up at the motor pool, so that was my thought. I want to do with the bonds. And since money has come out of a certain fund to maintain it, it probably should at least a portion of it go back into that. Although sure. it might yeah. be difficult to determine how much over the years. Sure. In, in you know money I would, put in I would suggest if if we sell it, if we decide that. I don't disagree with putting some of it into the motor pool. A portion of it should maybe go into the parks as they give back to the community for um, the gift. I was understanding, Kevin, that a plow truck is hopefully coming. And the one that you have right now is a little iffy to drive. Yeah, we're, uh, we're in the process of purchasing a new backer truck that, mm -hmm. was, that was slated to be purchased first. Um, yep. So that's been ordered, and the next the next purchase, when the vector is paid off, is going to be uh, a plow truck. Yep. Yep. Kevin, Kevin did also tell us that there is a municipal auction yeah, coming we, up. We sold our one-ton uh, dump truck last year um, in, in the fall time in the uh, October auction at Sheridan's. Um, it ends at the end of October, so there's not a big window if we wanted to auction it for them to get pictures and list it. We also haven't come across a title for it, so um, I don't know that we have one for it. It, it might just be a bill of sale. Um, we, we need to figure out legally how we can sell it, if that's the goal. Um, but we'll have to do some research on that. Yeah. We have we have the VIN number and that's as much as we have. The Secretary of State was no help, I can tell you that. Yeah. So they don't store records past ten years for vehicle VIN okay. ID numbers and that's much older than ten years. Based on the the phone calls and I, I called a lot of people that I thought might have any information about this vehicle. Um, and one of them suggested that I talk to Perry Township and so I called and talked to Troy. Parmalee, and he said, boy, I can tell you, we don't have a title on it. He said, I would know, because he's very meticulous about the <coughs> record. He said, but no, I've never seen a title on that vehicle. So I think we're just going to have to get whatever the DMV will give us, um, or sell it to somebody that's willing to just take a bill of sale and get their own whatever. But again, um, we can't do anything for sure with it until Justin gives us the go. But if if you all know tonight what you want to do with it and want to make up a motion, feel free to do that. If you want to think about it some more and bring it back to the table next meeting, we can do that. I would be in favor of moving forward with you know, to sell it, give Cessa the opportunity you know, to do decline first or to say first we'll, refusal and yeah, write a first re refusal if you will Bob mm -hmm. and then from there on figure out what the best avenue is for uh, listing it and, and selling it. Have you talked to Kyle about the title because you know the police can look at and verify the VIN fill out a paper. I haven't talked to him though. Mm -hmm. It might just be as easy as that. Talking to Kyle about that. We'd have to find get a better idea of the value of it because you want to pick the right auction too well i think with the the insurance is eleven thousand seven hundred something eleven thousand five hundred twenty six um and then <clears throat> the local guy that does antiques he told me between 10 and 14. Yeah, I think the but numbers are close. I think just yeah. like something a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, who does it more, yeah. yeah. And then find the right auction. Mm -hmm. that, the municipal auction might not be the right place for it. It, it may not be. There's oh. a 
and I can get a lot of collections. Classic car, auto trader website that yeah. lists vehicles yeah. that go back to the 1920s. Right. That uh, might be a good spot to, to look. And there again, it might take a little while to sell. It would be as instantaneous as an auction, but you probably get a chance of getting the best price out of it. Ultimately. Right. To look at it as some sort of with this wouldn't happen until it couldn't happen until yeah. the spring. The there's a, a as like a fundraiser, so an auction fundraising thing that could be one item that you auction off, but it'd have to be like a minimum bid, mm -hmm. whatever that minimum bid is. Yeah, even if we put it in an auction, we'd want to have, have a reserve, reserve on it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, we do have a prepared motion here if you, if anybody is interested in making that. If you want to add the things we've talked about, or again, if you want to wait until Justin tells us and then come up with uh, a new resolution at that point. Can, can I try my mind? first one? Yeah, sure. I move that we approve to sell the 1929 antique fire truck. <coughs> Second. <laughs> we have a motion by Jacob. Seconded by Bob. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. <coughs> motion passes. It's good job, Jacob. Thank you. <laughs> I have made notes on all your comments, and um, I'll bring back to you what I find out from Justin and other things that you've talked about. Okay, moving on then on our agenda. Oh, talking about, um, Bob made a comment at the last meeting about trying to establish um, a plan for people to be able to replace their trees. Mm -hmm. And so just bringing that back here tonight is to how do we want to develop that plan? Do we want to have a few council people or people from the community to determine how that's going to be done or shall we just as a council say because the city certainly doesn't want to be responsible for those trees we're not responsible for trees in the city we cleaned up the trees that were safety issues and that was because it was a safety issue so we <coughs> took out a lot of trees but it was for safety reasons. And I'd be delighted for people to be able to put trees back where they lost them if they want them. Now, not everybody might <laughs> want a tree back where it was before. If they're not going to plant it where it was before, do they still get one? I, you know, there needs to be some criteria, some, and probably something that makes it very clear to the people getting the trees that the city is not responsible for the tree. They have to water it, they have to nurture it, they have to take care of it. So those are my thoughts, open to discussion. Everything, I don't disagree with anything you said. It is their homeowner's responsibility, but we should have um, limitations on what can be planted so we don't get certain unwanted <laughs> trees, things that are considered, now considered invasive, like all our beautiful pear trees. <laughs> I know I brought this up before, are considered invasive species. Um, so we could, I know you, the ordinance committee was working on that at one time, <clears throat> one time, so um, I'd be happy to help with that. Find yes. it out, you know, okay, you can, you can plant this variety or, or you know, have a dozen species that we could plant, whatever that list is. <clears throat> um, but we probably want to let the homeowners questionnaire, mail them a questionnaire, do you want your, do you want trees planted or something like that? We need to ask them. Well, if, well if, yeah, you have to be careful how you pose it because then that would be like, you're almost saying, oh, if you want to replace, come see us. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know the city is not going to re pay for them, but we can try to get. If we got a hundred people let's say, because I don't want to make sure you lost off the top of my head, um, that want a tree, then we can. I can go to some of the people I know and try to get a reasonable rate on a tree at a decent size for them to purchase. Yes. Got it. 
so we get this many people get uh, like a consortium of people to buy the trees. And then they so we don't get twigs. Right. We get right. actually right. a tree right. kind of like right. you planted for Devin. Right. So. so then they would know that if the tree died, it's under warranty, they can go back to the company, not to come no, to us. No, nurseries do not give you a warranty. Some do. Nash does. Sure, it's retail. What? I'm talking wholesale. Oh, okay. But just so they don't, so they know that it's their responsibility and we're not the warranty. Correct. Holders, they can sure. go back to the company. Consumers has like guidelines that they recommend for trees planted around their infrastructure. Mm. We could come up with some sort of sheet or guideline as to tree size and height uh, in the right way or out in the front yards that <clears throat> kind of curb the, the root issue in the sewer and the entanglement and the curb stops and the damaging of the sidewalks. And I think I brought this up a couple of weeks ago, that Consumers does have a, a tree planting program um, that it was when all this happened, the deadline to apply was like July 31st or something like that. So I've got it marked on my calendar to, to reach back out to Consumers. Um, I think I'm gonna reach out to, I think it was Durand that I saw had um, participated in this program. I feel like it was Durand had some kind of contract with consumers for this city beautification project. Um, but again, you have to be picked by consumers to say yes, we'll provide the trees. And I don't know whether they were trees at a discount. I don't know if consumers mm -hmm. just provide the trees because they were, you know, think of Poly Street where they came in and took out all those trees. I, I think it's like a we took some down, we have these offers for replanting, maybe not in the same spot, but kind of like the rebuilding them. <laughs> Kevin, how so difficult I'll would it be to come up with the names of the homeowners and addresses where people lost trees? I believe I already have that list written down for okay. where we did the tree removal okay. and stuff. You know. All right. And when I reached out to a couple resources after the last meeting where we discussed it, um, I was given a couple resources. Many of them needed a 50% match. Yeah. So I guess we need to look at what are we willing to put forward. And if Bob's able to get the wholesale prices, at least, and we, you know, in our letter that we send to the people who lost trees, say that we have this available for this list of trees um, at this reduced rate, are you interested in purchasing one? I mean, that, that's the only way I know of that the city's not paying out city money for a few people's trees. Mm -hmm. And it would be different if it was donations that came in specified for tree replacement then that obviously would be used for that. But other donations coming in for city cleanup and restoration, um, <clears throat> I, I would feel uncomfortable with that. But, um, maybe, Bob, if you can come up with the list of trees, and then, Kevin, if you could get us, Shirley or I, the list of who the people are, okay. um, then we could come up with a potential letter, bring it back to a meeting, have you guys look it over and go from there. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. So we'll bring this back to um, the next meeting with a letter, a potential letter, a draft. That's what Larry calls it, a draft. And our next meeting is October 21st. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, 21st. Thank you. Okay, that is the end of our new business discussion. Any other business that might come before council at this time? Anyone here to make any comments related to any matter? Again, Kevin, I didn't realize it was your anniversary, but we all say we're so glad you're here. Yes.
Any other agenda items that anyone's aware of that needs to go on for the next meeting? Kind of yeah. odd that we start talking about it. Probably within our next couple oh, of meetings, yeah, yeah. we need to uh, begin to think about whether or not we're going to have a Christmas holiday lighting contest. Yeah. Again. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as near as I could uh, could tell, it looks like it may have been the end of October that we last well, year well, made that well. made that decision. Okay. We'll put that on the next agenda. And Chad, did you know you have the I Gary's do. Pride Awards? I, I, just, I, just, stole I, I just stole his map so I can see it. <laughs> see what you're supposed to be. Any other agenda items for the next meeting? Hopefully we'll have the uh, animal ordinance uh, okay. first readings of a number of uh, right. proposed uh, updates to that. You know where you go. Pending no. Justin's feedback. Yeah. And I guess put the um, fire truck discussion oh, back on. Hopefully mm -hmm. that will prompt Justin to get me uh, an answer. So now at 7.52, this meeting is adjourned.